today's class i am going to discuss about power dissipation so this topic is very important in vlsi design because our ultimate aim of vlsi design is minimize the power dissipation in integrated circuits so first we discuss the definition of power dissipation the power dissipation can be defined as the product of total current supplied to the circuit and the total voltage loss or leakage current so it's called as the power dissipation so total current supplied to the circuit and the total voltage loss or leakage current in the circuit it's called as the power dissipation so what are the sources of power dissipation in vlsi circuit the power consumed in a vlsi circuit can be broadly classified into two types first one is static power dissipation and second one is dynamic power dissipation so what is static power dissipation so what is the meaning of static so static in the sense when the circuit is maintained ideal that time also some power is consumed so it's called as the static power dissipation but dynamic power dissipation in the sense due to the switching activity charging and discharging the capacitance or parasitic capacitance so that type of power dissipation is called as the dynamic power dissipation so we will discuss one by one so first one is static power dissipation so static power dissipation is the power consumed when there is no circuit activity so when there is no circuit activity it consumes some power so this power is referred as the static power even if we remove the clocks do not modify the circuit input if modifying the circuit input the transistor may be turn on or turn off so in this case we do not modify the circuit input in the presence of the supply voltage the circuit will still consume some power which is referred to as a static power consumption even the circuit is no activity in this case also some power is consumed it's called as a static power consumption so it is mostly causes by leakage current so it's mostly causes by the leakage current flow when the transistor is off state so when the junction diode within the transistor or reverse biased so this reverse bias leakage current occur so when pgs vth sub threshold leakage current flows from the drain to source across the channel so vgs refer gate to source voltage vth refer threshold voltage you just see this diagram so it's a normal mosfet construction diagram so in this diagram we have a three terminals source gate and drain so here forming the two diodes here flowing the two current so i1 and i2 so i1 refer reverse bias so this i1 refer reverse bias current i2 refer sub threshold current so leakage power dissipation in the transistor is typically inversely proportional to the threshold voltage then come to the dynamic power so in this dynamic power dissipation the circuit is in operation the circuit is in operation which implies we have supplied the supply voltage clock and changing the inputs but static power dissipation we cannot supply the clock signal we cannot modify the input values but in this dynamic power we supplying the clock signal and changed the input values so that time some power consumed that's referred as the dynamic power so it is a primarily due to dynamic current such as capacitance current so switching power on short circuit current so this refer short circuit power so these two comes under dynamic power first we discuss switching power so what is switching power so switching power in the sense turn on the transistor on and off state if turn on the transistor charging the load capacitance turn off the transistor in the sense the charged capacitance value is discharged through another transistor so n mos transistor or p mos transistors so this due to total load charging and discharging which includes output capacitor and parasitic capacitors so here involved the output capacitors and also parasitic capacitors at a high level we may state that switching power dissipation so it's called as a switching power dissipation if you want to find the switching power dissipation you apply this formula p switch equal to alpha into vdd 
to CLF where alpha is represent switching activity VDD represent power supply voltage CL represent total load capacitance F represent operating frequency you are just applying these values into this equation you find the switching power the output of the circuit does not vary with each cycle but rather changes based on the functionality of the circuit as the result we can compute likelihood of the transition to 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 so it's called as a switching activity if switching activity occur in the VLSI circuit the capacitance values may be charging or discharging through PMOS transistor or NMOS transistor so this type of power dissipation is called as a switching power dissipation then come to the short circuit power dissipation so in this short circuit power dissipation so input is progressively with change so input is changed to 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 so based on the input value the PMOS transistor turn on or turn off NMOS transistor turn on or turn off so here the transistor is represent pull up network and pull down network so this pull up network consists of PMOS transistor pull down network consists of NMOS transistor so based on the input values the transistor may be switched on or off at the same time so it may create the short path from VDT to ground so consider a simple example you just look this diagram so it's a normal CMOS inverter so it's a construction diagram so in this diagram we have a two transistor one is a PMOS transistor and another one is a NMOS transistor the input is connect to both the gate terminal and the output get from pull up network and pull down network mid of the pull up network and pull down network the PMOS transistor is connect to VDD NMOS transistor is connect to VSS so it's a input waveform here the input waveform so beginning value is 0 then gradually increase it reach the maximum value then it also gradually decrease so here VTN represent threshold voltage for NMOS transistor VTP refer threshold voltage for PMOS transistor so more than the threshold value the transistor may be turned on so here VTN value and VTP so both are the threshold value in this particular portion so in this particular time period T1 and T2 both the transistors are turn on if both the transistors are turn on in the sense the VDD is directly short circuited to ground so it's called as the short circuit power dissipation so during the time period T3 and T4 so here also both the transistors are turn on so both the transistors are turn on the VDD is short circuit with the ground so in this particular time T1 and T2 the PMOS transistor and the NMOS transistor so both the transistors are turn on the VDD is directly short circuit to ground so this power dissipation is called as the short circuit power dissipation if you need to analyze the total power dissipation of the circuit you just sum of these three power dissipations so PD refer for total power dissipation equal to static power dissipation plus dynamic power dissipation plus short circuit power dissipation so sum of these three power dissipation is called as the total power dissipation of this inverter circuit i hope you understand the concept very well if you are watching first time in my video kindly subscribe and support us to make lot of videos thanks for watching my channel thank you